So the day is finally here. It's Oscar day. It was a long season, but we made it. We made it. But yeah, I don't really know what to say. I think we all know Oppenheimer's gonna win Best Picture. If it doesn't, that'd be the biggest shock of probably Oscar history. Lily Gladstone, Emma Stone, that's still questionable. Ultimately, I think my predictions are relatively safe. Typically when a film kind of dominates the way Oppenheimer has, that usually leads to a more predictable year. But we'll see. But the Oscars are always filled with one or two surprises in there. My goal before I die is I want to get every single category right. And this year, I'm not saying it's going to happen, but I'm saying that there is a possibility that it could. Or maybe not. We'll have to take a look. But the Oscars is about to start. Phone, get prepared. All right, well, starting off with the easiest category of the night, Divine Joy Randolph should easily the get Oscar this. Goes to Here we go. Divine. Wow, standing O. All right, starting off pretty strong, pretty good speech. Probably the best speech she's given this season. All right, moving on to animated feature and animated short. Animated feature is a category that we could definitely see a surprise in, right? If Boy and the Heron wins, that could definitely happen. And if it does, I think that would be like an official gauntlet throw. This is a brand new Academy. We gotta start rethinking how the Academy votes. And animated short, that's a category that's been bugging the heck out of me because everyone's going with wars over and something in my gut is saying 95 senses, but everyone was so sure I didn't want to be left out. So I just kind of went for wars over because I guess I wasn't confident enough. So I don't know, but if it's 95 senses, I'll be happy because it's my favorite of the bunch, but I'll also be really annoyed at myself. This is the categories that most people skip, but this is why I watch that. I watch the shorts every year, so I'm always invested in this. Here we go. And the Oscar goes to. Here it is. War is over. War is over. Okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. War is over. I want to just say thank you to everybody who's been telling me in the comment section it's war is over, but definitely not a great short. All right, moving on to animated feature. Let's see if Boy in the Heron does it. If Boy and the Heron wins this, for some reason I feel like Emma Stone's winning. Like, it's just that clear to me. How those things correlate, I don't know, but I just feel like it'll be clear that international voters are gonna be... All right, here we go. The Oscar goes to... Spider-Man? The Boy and the Heron. Oh my... Oh! The Boy and the Heron. The Boy and the Heron. Oh my gosh. I mean, we knew it was possible, right? BAFTA and Golden Globe, but I'm still pretty surprised to be honest. I don't know why I feel like now if I had to choose, I'd go Emma Stone. <laughs> Only because I feel like that shows that this new academy where, where it's introduced all these like international voters, like they went out to bat for Boy and the Heron. And if there's all those international voters, they may go for a more European type of best actress winner. So yeah, in my own weird way of thinking, I think that made best actress much more suspenseful. <laughs> All right, so that was crazy, but moving on to best original and adapted screenplay. I would say before The Boy and the Heron that these are pretty locked in, but I'm not gonna say that anymore. You know, cause uh, Oppenheimer could win adapted. And original? I think original is definitely still going to anatomy though. Yes, I love when they show this, the dialogue and the scene, I love that. All right, and I feel pretty good, anatomy still, I still feel good about it. Anatomy of a Fall. Anatomy of a fall. All right. So there's a big correlation of the winners here being the director of that film. It's like the Academy's sneaky way of awarding another director outside of the director category. All right, moving on to adapted screenplay. I'm feeling a little shaky on this. Dude, if Zone of Interest wins, that would be like, throw everything out the window when it comes to what we know about what the Oscars like. Could be Oppenheimer, it could be Oppenheimer. I would not be shocked by Oppenheimer. Could it be Barbie? I don't think it's Barbie. If I really had to choose who I wanted to win, I would choose Christopher Nolan. Here we go. American Fiction. American Fiction, okay. American Fiction. So right now I'm feeling like the membership it's still, it's new and old and it's together and it's sometimes it tips this way and sometimes it tips to this way. Making one $200 million movie. Yes, yes. Yeah, I really dug that speech. I love that, that's sick. 
All right, makeup and hairstyling, I have Maestro. Uh, could be poor things, but we'll see. Golda, nobody saw Golda, unfortunately. Maestro, but I don't know if people love the movie. Oppenheimer's definitely not gonna win. Poor things could win, because it's a beloved movie. And Society of the Snow is not gonna win either. All right, here we go. Goes to Maestro. Poor things. Oh! Oh! oh. Oh, I told Mark Johnson, if it's not Maestro, I'd send you a basket. If it's not Maestro, I'm going to send you a basket of, I will send you a basket <laughs> of goodies and an apology letter. I, I think it's nah. Maestro. So I guess Mark, send me your address. I got to send you a, a little basket of goodies. So if that went to poor things, that means production design and costumes is going to poor things. All right. So, so far, Bath is kind of matching up. Boy in the Heron, now makeup. Oh. So this means Emma Stone. All right, production design, I have to imagine it's Poor Things. If Poor Things won makeup, I have to imagine it's Poor Things. Could be Barbie. Is it Barbie? No, it's Poor Things. Poor Things. Yeah, okay. Poor Things for production design. I'm still, I'm still kind of surprised we're makeup for some reason. It's a reflection probably on, on they, they didn't love my show, but they didn't nominate The Whale in that one, but there's the tie-in with best actor. I don't know. Usually when there's a makeup nomination done on main characters, that's usually the winner. So that's why I was leaning Maestro because he's a main character. Willem Dafoe's supporting wasn't nominated, but yeah, crazy. Dang, John Cena, he's, he's, he's in shape. Costume design. I have Barbie. Would I change it to poor things if I could? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely, but I locked it in. It's too late. I got Barbie and I have to and live with Oscar it. The Oscar goes to? Poor things. Poor things? Oh man, it's a poor things night. Emma Stone's gonna win, isn't she? Wow, Emma Stone's gonna win. So Barbie's gonna go home with one Oscar. Poor things is already racked up. One, two, three. They all stand up and give a standing ovation now, but wait, wait till Best Actress is read. All right, international feature film. I cannot think of a more perfect person than The Rock to present the winner. But yeah, it's definitely gonna be Zone of Interest, Ooh. hands down. Hands down. There's no, no, no way it's not. Son of oh. The way he said it made me scared for a second. I was like, what? The son of Saul? Looking at poor things, snagging all those awards, and looking at Boy and the Heron getting animated. Now my brain's kind of thinking about whether Zone of Interest could win sound. All right, moving on to Best Supporting Actor. This for sure is going to Robert Downey Jr. I kind of like all the five actors coming out thing. I kind of enjoy that. It kind of looks like they're coming out to fight to the death. Just the idea of Christoph Waltz. Loving Barbie is kind of fun. Oh, I love Barbie. Mm, people always told me that I am enough. Mark Ruffalo is definitely second. With all those poor things wins, if there is a second, Mark Ruffalo is second. Okay. And the Oscar goes to... Robert Downey Jr. He's going to be already out of his seat, watch. Robert Downey Jr. There he is. I've seen some award shows where they're like, Robert, and he's already out of his seat. I'm like, there is a Robert De Niro in this category. Maybe you should wait a split second. All right, so now Academy Award winning actor, Robert Downey Jr. Oh my God, the dog is clapping. That was, that was adorable. All right, moving on to a, one of the other tricky categories of the night, visual effects. I currently have Godzilla. If you gave me an opportunity to change it now, I probably would stick with Godzilla. Okay, here it is. The Oscar goes to... Is it the creator? Godzilla. Godzilla! Yes! Well, at least I got that one. I got one category that was tricky. That's, I think what I'm learning right now is that I think ultimately Academy needs to first like the movie and then they get down. I don't think it starts with visual effects and then also is it good? I think it starts with, do I like it? Oh, also is the visual effects good? And I think that's where this applied. Creators visual effects are probably better, but the movie is just not a movie that people love. All right, so moving on to editing. Other than acting, Oppenheimer just won that one acting award. So I think this is where Oppenheimer is going to kick it into gear now. If, if Oppenheimer doesn't win editing, I will, I will myself. Oscar. Hopefully you Jennifer pronounce it <laughs> Oppenheimer. Yep, Oppenheimer. <laughs> much deserved, much deserved. I think, I think that is definitely a, a, an Oscar I feel very good about giving Oppenheimer. All right, so moving on to best documentary short and best documentary feature. I feel pretty good about these for the most part. Yeah, best documentary short, uh, Last Repair Shop is my favorite of all the shorts this year. So I, I just really want that to win. And then documentary feature, 20 Days in Maripool. Yeah, I feel pretty good about that for sure. 
If ABC is a book banning wins, I, I will be super annoyed. I don't think it is, though. I don't think it is. Here we go. Last repair yes, shop, please. I didn't know. I, I, the last come repair on. shop. Yes! Yes! Let's go, baby. I'm probably the only person on YouTube you're going to find who's really excited about a documentary short winner. No, but that that's awesome. But yeah, definitely go watch that. Watch it. It's free. It's free to watch. All right, documentary feature. It, it, it's definitely 20 Days in Maripool. Here we go. And the Oscar goes to 20 Days in Maripool. Okay, nice. All right, how many, I know I got a few wrong, but how many did I get so far? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, I got 11 right so far and I got three wrong. So let's just, let's just stop it at three. No more wrongs. But I'm probably gonna get Emma Stone wrong, so that'll be four. Wow, BAFTA's practically matching up exactly right now. The only thing is the uh, the visual effects, but they didn't nominate Godzilla. So cinematography, it should be an easy slam dunk for for Oppenheimer. The Oscar goes to Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer. Okay. All right. I need all the easy ones I can get. All right, moving on to best live action short. So before I felt pretty confident in Henry Sugar, but I know there's an outside chance of red, white, and blue because I, I know a lot of people like it. If this membership loved the craft of poor things, I think they're gonna love and respect the craft of Henry Sugar. I could be wrong. I mean, I've been wrong three and times today, so. the Oscar goes to the wonderful story of Henry Sugar, yes. Wes Anderson, and Peter Yes. Hill. Yeah, ultimately it's kind of bittersweet. Like you're happy that he won an Oscar. And I think that's why he didn't show up too, because I, I think he's like, uh, I want to win it for, you know, a bigger category than the shorts. That's for like newcomers. But hey, Wes Anderson officially has an Oscar. Okay, so moving on to best sound. Now this is a category, I was originally very confident on Oppenheimer, but it's been aligning with BAFTA so close that yeah, I could see Zone of Interest now winning this. We'll see though. Usually the sound work leans towards films like Oppenheimer. So I am still thinking Oppenheimer has this. If it's Zone of Interest though, man, we, we do have a new Academy. It's another one of those mic drops. The Oscar goes Here it is. To the Zone of Interest. Oh my gosh! The Zone of Interest? Oh, wow! Oh! Well, this has been matching up with BAFTA pretty much across the board. And you know what Best Actress BAFTA went for? Oh boy! Oh, and by the way, deserving winner. I would have voted for Zone of Interest in this category for sure. Dude, Ryan Gosling is killing it. He's killing it. It sounds just like the movie. I'm not even joking. I think that is one of the best original song performances I've ever seen at the Oscars. That was pretty amazing. All right, original score. This is where Oppenheimer does have it. I think this is definitely like a short thing like editing was. But maybe poor things. Maybe, maybe, maybe but it's Oppenheimer. And the Oscar goes to Oppenheimer. Oppenheimer, okay. Good, good All right. All right, best original song. I have What Was I Made For? If the Oscar voters were voting right now, I think they would vote for <laughs> the Ken song, but uh, they already voted. So and I think Oscar it's gonna be Billie to Eilish. <sighs> Billie Eilish. Yes, there we go. What Was I Made For? Okay. So Billie Eilish wasn't sure she was gonna win. Billie Eilish should go on Gold Derby more. All right, moving down to the final three, best actor. This one for sure will be Killian Murphy. Killian Murphy just wants his trophy and wants to get the hell home. I don't and think he's going to no after party. Too. Killian Murphy. There we go. Standing O. I mean, Killian Murphy is a definitely the right and deserved winner there. So yeah, happy to see it. All right, so down to best director, probably the second biggest Shore locked away thing, Christopher Nolan. And here it is. And the Oscar goes to Christopher Nolan Oppenheimer. Yes. Yeah, I, I, was, I was actually starting to think Christopher Nolan might be one of those directors, you know, like uh, Alfred Hitchcock or, or Stanley Kubrick that we just never really awarded in the director category, but it's lovely to see this. And it's for a worthy movie too. All right, moving on to best actress and I'm nervous. I have Lily Gladstone. If you ask me to, if I would change right now, I would changing a heartbeat to Emma Stone for sure. Seeing all those poor things wins, BAFTA has been aligning just spot on, but it's too late. There's so many mixed emotions, you know, like it's Emma Stone is incredibly, like it's so worthy of a performance. I would just feel really bad for Lily Gladstone. Both performances are so good this year. I don't know, it's, it's difficult. Is it gonna be SAG or is it gonna be BAFTA? 
Man, I'm nervous. I'm nervous because I know deep down it's, it's going to be Emma Stone Oscar now. And goes to Emma Stone. Emma Stone. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Emma Stone, Olivia Colman did it. It's a deserving performance. And if, for those who are Lily Gladstone fans who are upset over this, just know that it, it, it wasn't the performance. It was that she was just in the wrong category. If she was in supporting, she would have won. I think blame the campaign choices, you know? It, it just the screen time wasn't there. And yeah, oh, heartbreaking for Lily Gladstone. Last year, BAFTA didn't predict a single actor. All of SAG actors went to the eventual Oscar winners. This year, BAFTA went boom, four for four. It's just wild. BAFTA, do I trust you or not? Props, by the way, to Luke Kierfield and Brian Rao. They both got that. I mean, we're going to Best Picture. It's going to be Oppenheimer. And the winner and is... Maria is see Oppenheimer. Al Pacino announced that very in a, in a very confusing way. <laughs> All right, so Oppenheimer wins. It won every single award it was expected to win. It didn't overperform, but it did miss sound. But it did miss sound. So yeah, this is this is a, that best actress. That's definitely one for the books. I wouldn't say it's the most shocking announcement. I think a lot of people were aware that it very much could happen. It was a neck and neck race between Lily Gladstone and Emma Stone. If I had to get a time machine, I would just encourage Lily Gladstone. Please go supporting, go supporting, please. Otherwise, that was a pretty smooth show. I would say I actually do approve a lot of the winners. I will say. My three favorite movies of the year, honestly, are Oppenheimer, Holdovers, and Poor Things. And they all went home with trophies. And then I love Zone of Interest too. And that went home trophies. So honestly, a lot of winners won here that I, I actually do like. All right, well, that was a fun Oscars. I'm just excited to move on to the next year. I'm, we've been talking about these films way too long. I'm ready to turn the new page, the new films, the new performances to talk about. But other than that, let me know in the comment section below what your favorite win of the night was. Oh, and by the way, if you voted in the best picture experiment that I did a couple days ago where I collected ballots from you, that video announcing the winner is actually already up. It's my last video. So go ahead and check that video out or you can just click the link right here. Other than that, feel free to hit the subscribe button if you wanna see more Oscar and movie related content. Follow me on Letterboxd and Twitter, links in the bio. Thanks always for watching. And until next time, I will see you at the Oscars.